In this lesson, we create a web API project and test it using Swagger and Postman. The objectives for this lesson are to create a web API project using Visual Studio Code and using Visual Studio 2022. We're going to use the Open API or Swagger to test the web API, and we're going to use Postman as well to test these web APIs that we're going to create. We're also going to learn about how to comment the program.cs file for better readability. Our first demo is to create a web API project using Visual Studio Code. Bring up Visual Studio Code and go to Terminal, New Terminal, and navigate to wherever you like to put your projects. I'm going to put mine on my D drive under Samples. I'm then going to type in .NET New Web API. And I'm going to say no HTTPS. Now, if you want to use HTTPS, that's just fine. And then you give it the project name, which is going to then create a folder. And I'm going to call this one VS Code because I'm not going to use Visual Studio Code in this course. I'm actually going to use Visual Studio 2022. But I at least wanted to give you a, a shot at how to get this going using VS Code. So we run that command. We then do a file open folder, we navigate to wherever we created our project, and we select that folder. Now, just hesitate for a couple seconds here, and then down here in the right-hand corner, you're going to get a little dialog that says there's some required assets needed to build and debug. So we're going to add them, say yes. Once you have those installed, we can go ahead and run And when Visual Studio runs, what it's going to do is just come up with the website. And you have to know what your particular APIs are. And they have one built in that comes with the template that gives us some different weather forecasts. Let's now take a look at creating a web API project using Visual Studio 2022. Bring up Visual Studio 2022 and click on Create a New Project. Search for templates up here. We want to search for an ASP.NET Core Web API. And choose the one that says the ASP.NET Core Web API. And click Next. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call it VentureWorks API. I'm going to put it under the folder where I like to have my projects. Now, I like personally putting my solution and project in the same directory, but feel free to choose whatever you want there. Click Next, and now choose either .NET 6, .NET 7, .NET 8. They're all going to be about the same, whichever one you are working with. And the authentication type, I'm going to do none for this particular project. Now, again, you can choose to use HTTPS or not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to enable Docker. Now, I want to be able to use controllers. I'm not going to be using minimal APIs. Please see my other course on minimal web APIs if you're interested in that feature. And for now, I'm not going to enable open API support. I want to show you what happens and how we run these without the open API support first. And I don't want to check the do not use top level statements. I do want top level statements. We'll go ahead and hit create. So once our application comes up here. We're all ready to run. And we just run this just like we did with Visual Studio Code. And we'll get a browser up with some weather forecast information. So this again is just built into the template. And we're going to take a look at that here in just a minute. But as you can see with Visual Studio, it actually does call the first API that it finds as opposed to Visual Studio Code. Now another way, instead of using the browser to test your web API calls, you can use a tool like Postman. Now Postman is a free utility. There's a paid version as well. That'll help you test your web APIs, provides a nice graphical interface. You don't have to write any code or just see the stuff through the browser. And it allows you to test the gets, posts, puts, patches, and delete requests. You can send headers, body, and authorization settings. And you can download it for free at www.postman.com. Let's take a look at testing your web API using Postman. 
First off, start your program running, your web API project, and grab this URL, then bring up Postman, and in the untitled request, you're going to want to put in that exact same URL, and make sure you choose Get here from the drop-down list, because we're doing a Get. We want to get data. And when we send this, it sends it out over runs our web API, the data is returned, and then look at this down here in the response. This is nice. It actually formats the data for us. So this is a lot prettier than just in the browser. You'll be able to see things a little bit clearer. Postman is a great tool. There's a free version. There's a paid version. But if you haven't used this, it's really nice. There are a couple other ones like, uh, what's the other one? Open UI or something like that. And then there's Fiddler. So there are quite a few other tools that will allow you to test your web APIs as well. Now there's also something called an open API. Microsoft has built this into Visual Studio and it's a tool that reads the structure of your API and it displays a page that shows the methods in your API, the parameters for each API, what inputs and outputs are gonna be needed and returned. And you can add to your project this open API and Swagger using a NuGet package. However, if you're creating a new project, you could actually select that Enable Open API Support checkbox, which is what we're going to do now. So let's create the Web API project again from scratch with Open API Support. So delete the folder you made before, create a new project, and I'm going to again choose the ASP.NET Core Web API project. That's the one that I want to create. That's the template that I'm going to use. So Microsoft kind of gives you a bunch of nice things built in. And I'll call it AdventureWorks API. I'm going to put it into my folder location. Now I'm going to use .NET 6, but feel free to use .NET 7 or .NET 8 if it's available when, when you're watching this. Authentication type, I'm going to set to none. I'm going to not configure for HTTPS. I'm going to use controllers, and I now want to enable the Open API support. So let's go ahead and create this project now. And when this loads, go ahead and run this. And now, instead of just seeing that weather forecast be dumped into the browser very unceremoniously, what we're going to get this time is a nice little Open API web page that's powered by Swagger, and it gives you the APIs that it finds in your project. So as we build more APIs, they're going to show up here. And then you can click on this, and it'll give you a little thing that says Try It Out. And it's showing you kind of an example of what's going to come back down here in this Responses area. And when we click on Execute, it will go out. It'll show you us the request URL. Then down here, it shows you the status code it got back, which is 200, which means, OK, everything went well. And it shows you then the response body. And that is the JSON, but now nicely formatted, just like we saw in Postman. This is a really nice interface, just built into Visual Studio, and really no need to use any other tools. But there are tools out there available if you want to try them out. Do you know why you should subscribe to YouTube channels? You'll get notifications when new videos appear. You'll get recommendations for related channels. It helps the channel grow, which allows me to create more videos for you. It helps attract others to my channel. Your like helps others find videos that are good. So please take the time to like and subscribe to my channel, Paul D. Sheriff. Now, program.cs is the starting point for our web APIs. It creates what's called an application builder object, and this object is used to add and configure services that you want to run, and it helps you add and configure middleware services as well. Then it creates a web application object that turns on the middleware services that you've added and runs the application. The problem is Microsoft doesn't do a very good job of documenting program.cs, so let's kind of go in, take a look at these various things that it does, and then comment it. So line one is where it creates that web application builder object. It then can add some services, as you see here, builder.services.addController. So the services collection is where you add in and configure different things. For example, the Swagger and Open API support. Then we're going to build a web application object by doing builder.build. 
And then we can configure things like checking if the app environment is development. And if it is, let's use Swagger. Let's, let's use the Swagger UI. The Swagger is not going to show up in production time. You don't want it to. And then we can use authorization. We can map controllers. We can do a run on the application. So the problem is just looking at all of this, it's not very nice and very clear about what's doing what. So guess what? I'm going to throw a bunch of nice comments in here. So first off, we create that web application builder object that configures how ASP.NET services runs. Then I've got a, a place where we can add and configure our own services. I said we're configuring the ASP.NET to use the controller model because we're using MVC controllers, which we're going to explore here in just a bit. Then configuring the open API and Swagger. And then after adding and configuring services, we create an instance of the web application object. Then we start configuring our HTTP request pipeline, and that's where we do things like turn on the services that we want to use. So the open API when we're in development mode. We want to enable the authorization middleware to be ready to go. We want to enable the endpoints of controller action methods. And then finally, run the application. In this lesson, we learned how to create a web API project using both Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio 2022. We use Swagger to make testing the web API easy. By the way, Swagger is also available in VS Code. You just have to type in the URL slash Swagger. Postman is also a very good tool for testing. And we also then commented the program.cs to make it a little bit easier to understand. Coming up next, getting started with controllers and return types.